Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalyze Are Done. I remain your host, Chad, if you're 333 and this next ex exhibition match is going to be between Aquanim and 400 on Vitra. Which will be curious to watch because we have already Aquanim going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, and this map, also, also Cloaky for 400. This is one of those maps that's large, but due to the hills, tends to favor bots quite a bit. It's also one of the prettier maps. It's kind of a subtle pretty. Like, it's, it's certainly a bit more of a mid-2000s, like, mid-first decade of the 2000s pretty, but it's still pretty. Also, I have a lot of nostalgic memories of games from, like, 2005-ish, so, yeah, that it appeals to me in that way. Anyhow, both players going for Loki, both players going for pretty quick, well, moderately quick. I can go for quicker glaives than 400. 400 going for a bit more of a warrior strategy. Going for the anti-rating, and already playing defensively too. Their positioning is much more defensive. They have the one glaive going out to four, two Aquanim's base. Aquanim with three glaives going into 400's base, and 400 with the one glaive to defend, along with the warrior, which will be done in a few seconds. But really, Aquanim much more forward at this point. More focused on making sure that 400 isn't expanding for free. Aquanim isn't really focused on actually raiding, while 400 looks like they are going to be focusing on raiding. Moving straight into a four, well, yeah, they will be moving straight into Aquanim's base pretty soon. Aquanim taking out one of 400's glaives, but doesn't really care. There's no real push to harass. There's a bit of a, just like I said, it's a, it's a containment push. While 400 with the harassment and should be able to get rid of, is this conflict? The, the Conjurer's going to go down. Yes, it is. That Conjurer is not going to be saved. That Glaive trying to save it as best as possible. 400 does lose the Glaive, but that's fine. That Conjurer death, definitely worth it. That is going to slow Akinum down quite a bit. 400 needs to take advantage of this, and they are sending the commander to expand where the constructor failed for Aquanim. Well, the analogous mirrored position where Aquanim failed. And 400, with a few constructors of their own, with the warriors to defend as well. So the idea, of course, being... Oh no, the warrior is not defending. The warrior is going forward. Harassing with the warrior. That has That's 400's game plan, apparently. They just want to go forward with that warrior, deal with things. Now, of course, Aquanim is putting themselves in a bit of a good position really this is a this is a position they'd want to be in if these glaives realize oh hey there's a free conjurer here get rid of the conjurer that would basically make up for the fact that they lost their own at this point though 400 with the economic advantage thanks to destroying the conjurer i mean that you can see right here there's two metal per second advantage it's minor but that's entirely because this conjurer died aquanum would be at like 18 metal per second by now had they not lost the conjurer I stress this all the time it happens because it is super important if you're playing this game, make sure when you're raiding, focus on workers. Always, always, always focus on workers. If you can get rid of a worker, it's so worth it. And here's that first warrior coming into harass from 400. The other one's over here to the east, but this is a little bit faster from the west. And this damage will... Ooh, actually, it's going to be tricky. Alcanon's commander so close with the Rocco as well, and the Conjurer getting hidden... So that stops the warrior in its tracks. The western warrior is down. The eastern warrior has, however, come into position. Not a whole lot in place to defend against it. The two glaives are going to be going up the hill to try to stop it. Not really going to matter. The defender is here. The Rocco is here. There we go. That's the real defensive force of the Rocco. And over to the north, we do have the glaives from Akinem attacking 400's Conjurer. That's not going to be mattering too much. And the warrior coming in here, basically to die. Should be able to get rid of a couple glaives, but that's it. Once the Rocco got in there, it was all over. And the northern side, 400, does lose their Conjurer, but they already expanded quite a lot. Aquanum is now getting into the game of expansion. Now getting back into position. I mean, how many... They have three Conjurers, and at the same time, it looks like 400 has about three as well. So both players, even for expansion power, 400's commander being used far more aggressively, though. Aquanum being much... Uh, their Aquanum's commander has been entirely on their starting plateau this entire game. While 400's commander being nice and forward... I mean, sorry, yeah, 400 is going to be nice and forward. Akinem doing a bit of harassment. Not really going to matter too much. Akinem still way ahead economically. Production-wise, not a whole lot's taking advantage of it, though. Neither player really pushing their metal into their production. They're pushing their metal far more into getting more of an economy. Probably when they get to plus 25, that's when we should see some caretakers. That's when we should see... Al actually, already a Conjurer coming in here. for 400. But not really for the caretakers. But at this point, 400 really should be worrying about getting a Caretaker or getting more Conjurers just to build up. That's what they need. Aquanum going for size though! So we will be seeing size very shortly. Only one being constructed so far, and at the same time, these Rockos going forward for Aquanum. I mean, this is 
really, this is keeping 400 a bit contained, but 400 at this point in a safe position, moving forward, trying to get rid of yet another Conjurer, and if these Glaives can regroup for 400, well, it's a little late now, but I mean, they should be able to guess where the Conjurer is, but the, if the Glaives can regroup, that should do the trick. And it looks like they are going to regroup around, oops, they are going to regroup around the southwest corner of the map, and that should do it. At the same time, some damage has been dealt to the northeast side, but the Conjurer's doing fine. Still still around, still able to rebuild, and Aquanim going to be winning this engage- Oh, never mind. No one wins the engagement. All Glaives die, but at least, really, 400 wins that engagement because they didn't lose anything. Both players, however, now accessing their metal. Aquanim getting Caretakers up, but that's more in a reclaim position than it is- Oh, well, okay, reclaim or second factory position. So Aquanim probably going to go for an air switch at this point. I mean, it would kind of make sense for- planes for phoenixes, I suppose. I I don't know. At this point, with Aquanim's economy, I don't see an air switch really working out. Like, this seems like a reclaim caretaker. Aquanim loves their reclaim caretakers. That's the only reason I'm thinking they're doing that. At the same time, though, they don't have a caretaker or anything near their factory. They do have an... Okay, they have one really forward near their factory. Like, this... This is reclaim for me. And there's that scythe. Finally getting out there, but 400 still with the economic advantage. They do need to have more production. They do need to have far more working on their factories. Both players are accessing metal like mad. I mean, 400 still has the economic advantage, but it's the production advantage that's really causing problems. Or the lack of production advantage. There we go. Conjurer is being used to actually get that production advantage going, so 400 should be able to translate their economy into proper production within the next minute. And while that happens, Zakonim going for the harassment. Hurting a little bit, but not all that much. So, oh, there's an air switch. There is indeed a plane factory being built and gunships being built for 400. So, like I said, probably going to go... For, well, actually, let's see what the army composition is. Right now, 400. They went for a lot of glaives, but at this point, they aren't really going for a whole lot except for the gunships. They're going straight for gunships, so we could be seeing swifts. If Aquanum calls it, we'll see swifts. If Aquanum's thinking more ground units, we'll see phoenixes. Or possibly thunderbirds. I don't see thunderbirds really against Cloaky though. Against shields, yes, but against Cloaky. I don't know. Phoenixes are pretty much balanced around taking out cloaky armies. At this point, though, the answer is nothing. Aquanim focusing entirely on their cloaky bot factory. Getting scythes and hammers, going for the really, well, not quite the sneaky, but definitely the indirect approach. Don't want to be trying to knock down 400's base. They just want to be sneaking past it or, well, knocking it down from afar. Don't want to try to charge through Aquanim, through 400's base, I should say. Aquanim focusing more on Options that are relatively safe, allow them to infiltrate or allow them to attack from afar. At this point though, 400 still with a massive economic advantage, going for a Banshee army at this point, while nothing coming in for Aquanum's air. I'm thinking Aquanum is probably just trying to wait for Swifts. Like, wait until they see gunships, and then when they see gunships, go for Swifts. Just mass build Swifts. I'm not sure I agree with the idea, but given that they don't have a huge amount of economy, I can't say it's a bad idea. And no, Thunderbirds are indeed the option. I... I mean, Thunderbirds are a strong option. I'm not really going to disagree with that. And another Conjurer goes down in the center, so that does halt 400's expansion attempts to the center a bit. And Aquanum, with the Reclaim now, getting up into a relatively even position. With Reclaim, mind you. They do need that Reclaim. But they have a lot in their territory. Good 450 Reclaim in... Well, uh, let's be more in their territory. Still 500 Reclaim in their territory. They can easily take that. 400, on the other hand, they do have... Well, they got nothing. They have basically nothing in their territory. A couple hundred metal here and there. Their territory is larger, but they don't really have a whole lot. They've been losing a lot of units, trying to just expand and take over as much of the map as possible. At this point, though, 400 with their Banshees. Seven Banshees so far, probably going to wait until they get about 12. And then when that happens, rush in. Rush in, deal all the damage they need. And there's the Thunderbird. Like, I mean, it's good. It's just that there isn't enough of an army to really justify using it at any point. So at this point, I don't see Akinum really throwing... Okay, throwing it out there against the defenses. That's a good idea. Open them up. Let the sides take care of it. 400 losing their commander at the same time, too. I wasn't sure that was going to happen, but yes, it did indeed. 400 without their commander, that's actually a bigger blow than it looks. Because while 400 does have the economy, their commander was a forward expansion force. So right now, this is all kind of dead. Like this whole area here, everything here, that... Once Aquanum puts any pressure on there, it's gone. There is nothing going to be able to rebuild that. But at the same time, the Banshees are in. There was only seven of them. Didn't man... I guess that must have forced their hand. I mean, the attacking the commander, basically, why not? What do you got to lose at that point? 
Well, at this point you have half a dozen Banshees to lose. That is actually something, and it's something not worth losing, but that factory being so heavily focused, which is gonna cause all the Banshees to die, and 400 losing everything they threw out there. I don't... As a general rule, unless you're sure you're gonna be able to get rid of the factory, and even then it's kind of risky, don't go for factories. Like, it's, it's an easy thing to go for, it's a mistake I've made all the time, and it's, sometimes it pays off, too. Sometimes it's not a mistake. Sometimes it's worth it. But when there's defensive turrets around, just go for the turrets. Like, go for the turrets, go for the money, go for the caretakers. Caretakers first, actually. Caretakers are really cheap. Getting rid of them, you've probably halved the production capacity of the nearby factories. And, I mean, the caretaker did go down, so that was good. But at the same time, 400 with the ground force follow-up. However, those are all glaives. With the warrior there, there should be enough glaives to stop it, but still, there will be a cost. There'll be a lot of losses, and the glaives over to the north of the battle, they're not going to do so well. Over the east side, they have a bit more of a chance, but they need to retreat. And the glaives for Akronim coming in as well, which... Well, they got a pretty clear path, actually. Going up here and through here, there's like one or two lotuses they'd have to deal with, and that's it. And 400 with a few warriors trying to get into position, but really, there's a lot of room that Akronim has to deal with all this stuff. 400 with a bit of a regroup coming in here, trying to harass on the edges again. I mean, they've dealt some damage, they've gotten rid of a few metal extractors here and there. That is important. That's probably the most important thing at this distance from the main base. I mean, there's nothing to rebuild the metal extractors, so get rid of them. Stop Akronim from getting those, getting all that money, really. That's the big thing. However, this is what I meant, though. Akronim has this great open path. There's a couple glaives to defend, well, a glaive and a warrior to defend. It's not really going to do all that much, but more banshees. We are going to see another banshee attack, apparently. And it's worth pointing out that the, the air factory has not yet been rebuilt, so this this is actually possibly going to work for a second pass. I don't recommend it, but I could see it happening. I could see 400 going for that. But 400 definitely trying to go for that assault, and there's not a whole lot to deal with these warriors. It looks like we're just going to have the warrior-warrior battle, which Aquanum will win just by sheer numbers. And at the same time, more glaive assaults coming in for the western side of the map, and the Thunderbird completely stopping that. 400 needs to be mindful of this, and 400 not even paying attention to this. No, 400 was paying attention to it. Where's 400 paying attention to? Well, not there, apparently. So all these glaives died thanks to the Thunderbird. Fair enough. That Thunderbird was definitely worth it. I mean, like I said, Thunderbirds are very strong. It's just against a small army... Like, Thunderbirds are strong, but they're also really valuable, and that every single shot of a Thunderbird you use is for however long it takes to reload, not a shot that can be done again. So against smaller armies, it's worth it as a force multiplier, but it's also kind of risky because if the army is spread out enough, that might waste the shot you needed. Anyway, the Banshee's coming into the... Nine Banshees this time, coming in over to the eastern side of the map. 400 with a bit more damage. Needs to get rid of that... There we go. Get rid of the Conjurer. And the Razor in place, though, that's not a good thing. Obviously, that's terrible. That's an anti-air defense. Most of the Banshees trying to stay out of range. A couple of them did go in. I don't think that was a command. I think those Banshees did that on their own. However, oh, if there was a ground force there to deal with that Razor while the Banshees were in place, that would have been awesome. At this point, 400 is still in a relatively strong economic position. But they are going to have a harder time dealing with anything using their Banshees. Their Banshees are going to have to be more of a mid-range force or a midfield force. Just keeping Aquanim in check rather than trying to kill Aquanim's base. The time for surprise is over. Like, how many Razors are there? Anyway? Okay, there's the one Razor, so there is a good chance that the Banshees could actually attack from another angle. But at this point, the Banshees are basically a defensive crowd control force. They're not going to be able to be used so much as an offensive force, which kind of sucks because that's basically what they do. They are they're there for rushing in and dealing a lot of damage. Just really targeted rush force. Like they're, they're shock troopers. They're not really defensive. They can kind of work defensively, but that's not what they do best. And Akronim coming in to try to get rid of 400... Ooh, getting rid of the Zeuses. That'll be easy. The warrior is out of position to help the Zeuses. And the Zeus is not really able to get rid of the Glaives. So the center of the map going kind of to Akronim. But Akronim right now... I mean, they have forces around. I've got a tick in the back here, too. They have forces around the map, but really... Really, it's... A lot of it is coming down. It's very fluid right now. There's not much that's really held. 400 kind of has the center of the map, but Akronim has the military to take it out as soon as any pressure is applied. But 400's also getting huge amounts of reclaim from the center of the map, so there's enough control that the, 
the actual metal on the ground is going to 400. Which is being used for a Strider Hub, which I think is going to... Well, obviously 400 is going for that. That is that's their end game. Which is usually the end game. You don't usually see missile silos. You don't usually see... Definitely don't see silencers. But at the same time, Firewalker? No, Archangel! Jump on for Archangel and Jack from Aquanum, as well as a Spider Factory. Probably for Crab. Although, hmm. You know, actually, no. Now that I think about it, for this sort of thing, I could see... Uh, no, I think Crab. Why would you go for a Spider Factory as a side thing? Like, Venom Redback wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Archangel makes sense. It's a very strong AA. Jack makes sense. It's a really good anti-defense assault force. It, it's able to just push through at this high HP and not worry about a whole lot for most of the assault. Spider Factory, you basically go for the Crab. And indeed, we do have nothing. Nothing at all. Aquanim will be waiting on that for now. I have to keep an eye on that factory because I have no idea what they're going to go for. So, first time in a long time we've had a neutral time in this game. Dante is coming out for 400 and Aquanim... I mean, they've basically got this timing. There's not a whole lot that 400 has army-wise. They've got basically half a dozen glaives. They have a few tridents. Their banshees are all dead. They're... Died in a big fight over the top of Aquanim's base. A lot of the conjurers are gone too. There's a lot of free reclaim. The tech, however, is also gone, but at this point, Aquanim basically has this timing. Now is the time, and they are striking. They know it. About six seconds before the glaives are done, but even then, even with those glaives, this would be a hard-fought battle for 400. 400 will be able to, with some losses, defend against this. There's enough static defenses to keep their glaives alive, and there's the hill for, Aquan for 400, so Aquanim can't quite push through. Good try, though, and Scythe coming in, which means that Aquanim should know there is... Okay, they know this is the Strider Hub. They can assume there's a Dante, because there's always a Dante. No one ever goes for anything but Dante. Well, occasionally Scorpion, but usually just Dante. So that is known. All that stuff is known. And Shieldbot Factory... Is Aquanim just going for every single type of factory just to have all the options available? Shieldbot makes sense. That's Racketeers. Not sure what the Spiderbot Factory thinking was. Maybe Tarantula. Maybe Redback. Or Venom. But Shieldbot is for Racketeers. That is the entire purpose of that. Get the Racketeers, stun out the Dante, and at the same time, 400 getting harassed quite hard. Aquanum with all these glaives around the map, taking advantage of the fact that 400's economy is going into a heavyweight unit, which is over to the eastern side of the map, not doing all that much. Finally, 400, having built that, able to get a nice lightweight assault force and defense force around of glaives. A little bit risky, because glaives is still a matter of glaive micro. But at this point, there is a good spot. Oh, well, there would be a good spot if it weren't the fact that Aquanim managed to get behind there. That's not what 400 wants at all. And 400 able to get out of that, but... No, not even able to get out of that. Not yet. There are some defensive glaives going around the side. Or were, but not anymore. Does Aquanim even have... No, 400 doesn't have radar. Aquanim does have no radar either, actually. No, Aquanim's got radar. Aquanim's got a whole... Has a radar plane, don't they? Yeah, they got, they've got radar. They know what's going on. So Aquanim is much more knowledgeable than 400, but 400, they have the Dante. This is really the moment of truth. At this point, 400's economy is so much weaker than Aquanim's. The reclaim is all gone. These conjurers really should be reclaiming, though. Like, there's still a lot of reclaim to work with here. That needs to be taken. Because 400 has gone far behind. 400 was ahead this entire game. They're now behind. But at the same time, the Dante is kind of forcing Aquanim's hand. Forcing all of Aquanim's forces back, and that leaves 400 a lot of room to breathe, a lot of room to reclaim, and rebuild. And also the Dante's come- oh, that Razor being open, trying to get rid of the Tridents. Not sure if that was intentional, but it definitely worked out nicely, because that Razor armor is quite heavy when it's there. And the Thunderbird not able to completely do his job. There should be a Racketeer very shortly, though. Yeah, there's the Racketeers. The nearest Racketeer is right here. But that Dante being pretty careful. Staying out of the way, more or less. So, overall, that Dante just needs to go around the side. If it goes around the side, goes around here, should be okay. Because the Racketeer going a bit far forward. Akinem does know where it is, though. I'm not sure why Akinem's moving the Racketeer's further forward. And at the same time, 400 really using the Dante almost more as a distraction. But this is where the Thunderbird really shines, stopping that army of Glaives, forcing them back. Some of them are still active, but most of them are fully disarmed. And that does present a problem. So, right now, 400 really playing the Contain game. Not going for the Assault game, not trying to win with this. The Dante is really just a distraction. Like, it's being used as a way of keeping Aquanim occupied.
but not as a way of actually tearing down Aquanim's forces. I find that very clever. Like, it's something I don't see a lot of people use, which really they should, is this is multi-pronged attacks. Zero K makes multi-pronged attacks really easy, so just use them. I mean, I realize there's obviously some tactical issues that can occasionally come up in terms of money spent, but yeah, overall, if you can force your opponent to push a lot more of their forces than they need towards one side, then you attack from the other side, and you're fine. And Aquanim's commander about to go down. That's going to be really devastating for 400. No, never mind. Very smart by 400. Moving away from the commander right as it dies. That's important to do, and with that, that is game. The Dante didn't really manage to do all that much directly, but really set up for that win. That was how you do it. Intelligent, slightly unconventional, but effective use of a Dante. Really, distraction play is not used as often as it should be, and it's wonderful to see it used here. Anyway, that is... How was that? A very even unit value the entire game. But yeah, metal income. 400 had the advantage the entire game. Aquanim, they were... Aquanim was really staying in through to a smart combination of harassment and... Actually, it was mostly harassment, really. Harassment was the real reason Aquanim stayed in as long as they did. But 400's economic advantage did pay off ultimately. But yeah, harassment, good unit composition, intelligent defenses. The problem was Aquanim didn't expand as much as they could have. 400 really took a lot of the expand. They took most of the center. Like, 400 took all the center and held on to it for the majority of the game. Aquanim did manage to break down a bit of it, but didn't manage to really take the area. And that little advantage kept 400 in the game, even during some of the more har harassment-oriented periods of Aquanim's play. So that was... That was an economy game that wasn't entirely decided by economy, it was definitely decided by clever tactics. Supported by a strong economy. Because you need a strong economy to support clever tactics. But the clever tactics really won the day. Anyhow, last game for tonight is going to be between Hokomoko and Orphelius on Isle of Grief. Which I just realized now maybe I shouldn't have picked because of gunships, but hey, we might see if some cool gunship play. I mean, we just saw some really cool play, and although Vitra's a good map. There's... I really quite like Vitra as a map. It's, it tends to produce some interesting games, just due to its construction. It's kind of hard to, well, yeah, it's kind of hard to hold the center, which makes it interesting. Like, getting into the center is fairly easy, getting through the center is a little bit harder. Anyway, at any rate, that was a good game. So, let's move on to hopefully what will also be a good game on Isle of Grief in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.